Okay, in preparation for removing the rear wheel to get the new tire mounted, we're going to need to clean and mark the adjusters on the back wheel and the swing arm. So what I do is I take a 50-50 mix of alcohol and water and we wipe this down. And we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. You'll, you'll see why, if you've never done this before, why we do these, this um, cleaning and marking. And then make sure this is good and dry. Okay, very good. Basically, what you're going to do is I'm going to take some silver paint, mark the swing arm, mark the nut. This cap will come off. Once that cap comes off, we're going to back off the adjuster nut three full turns, both sides. Both sides will be marked, nut, swing arm, because right now I know my belt is in perfect alignment. Um, they had put a new belt on for the guy that I bought it from. So this way, once we back this off three full turns, we'll back off the other side three full turns exactly. Then we pop the clip, remove the nut, pop the axle out, wheel drop off. But the, the main thing you're doing this for is when you put it back together, you know your belt's adjusted properly, we'll crank it back the other way three full turns on each one, and the belt will be back to perfect. So without having the belt alignment tool and, and making your own like uh, Del Boy's Garage did, Basically, you'll do it this way. This is how we do the touring bikes. We mark the cams on them. Uh, the Sportster doesn't have a cam. It has an adjuster. So we'll do it that way, and we'll mark it, and we'll be good to go. All right, let me get some silver paint here, and we'll start marking. You guys, don't tell my wife I stole some of her silver paint, all right? She's an amateur artist. So, okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see if we can mark this. So I'm going to mark the nut. Well, that was a little too much mark. I'm going to have to wipe that back off and we'll start all over again. I didn't realize that this paint was that sloppy. This paint, it's an acrylic paint and very runny. All right, let's try this again. See if we can just get a dab. We just want to mark swing arm and then the nut. It'll be hard to see because I'm using silver, but if it looks like it's not going to work, I'll get some red to mark the nut itself with. Come on, camera. Not a camera not agreeing with me here. Alright, we're going to do the same thing right on the swing arm, straight down. And then on to the nut. Yeah, I think we'll have to use red to mark the nut with. But the swing arm's now marked, so I'll get some red and we'll mark that. And then we should be good to go. Alright, I'm back with some red. Let's see how this works. See if this doesn't work better. There we go. That's one side. And we'll mark the other side. And then I think we'll be good to go. So I can start disassembling the rear tire. There we go. And that is... Perfect. So once that paint dries, now I have my marks for where we're going to go ahead when we back this off. See, this cap unscrews, three turns, other side, three turns, exactly lined up with that mark. And then it'll go right back once we go three turns back. We'll be right where we need to be to have the belt back adjusted. All right, coming up, removal of the wheel. 
All right, today we're going to be re removing the back wheel off of the 883 Custom. So this is going to require a one and an eighth inch wrench to hold the axle on the other side, a one and a quarter inch socket and breaker bar for the nut side, a pair of needle nose pliers to pull the clip, three quarter inch wrench to hold the shock nut in place, a T50 with adapter to loosen the shock nut on the right side because uh, you have to back the, the bolt out probably half inch so you don't catch the drive pulley on that actual bolt. It's going to require a half inch wrench and I also pulled out a quarter inch Allen head in case I decide to remove the belt guard. Not 100% sure if it's going to be necessary. I have a dead blow hammer of course to knock the axle out and then spinning around here we've got a hydraulic jack with a piece of wood which I will put underneath the tire because I'm up pretty high on the jack I don't want it to just drop when I um, finish getting the axle out so this way it'll be supported with the jack until I'm ready to lower the wheel out of the out of place you see the calipers there the caliper stays I don't know why so many guys when they do this job they remove their caliper it isn't necessary provided you don't press your rear brake pedal and have to um, you know uh, squish the piston back in with the pads the disc will slide right out of the brake caliper so you shouldn't have any issues with that again half inch wrench is going to be to back off the adjuster okay you see I've marked it as I showed you earlier in the video it's marked we're going to do three full turns on each side okay and that'll keep our belt alignment when we put it back together we'll go three turns back obviously if we need four turns out we'll go four turns generally three is enough so let's get started here make sure we got a good angle for you guys to see all right first step is going to be pulling the clip for the nut get up in here with the needle nose should pop right off remember the jack is is supported or the uh, bike is supported on the jack okay and it's I am using a tie down so it does not rock off of there all right next bit we're gonna loosen the axle nut not gonna take it all the way off we just want to loosen it for right now okay this on this side Yeah, you're going to come free, aren't you? I'll try to do this without knocking the camera over. See if we can get this locked into place here. All right, come on. There we go. And got you turning. Yeah, these go back. When it goes back together, it actually goes back at like 100 foot-pounds. So that's why it's a little rough to get off. All right, axle's free. Yes, it is. All right, very good. The axle's free. It's spinning free. So now, while we got that done, we're going to pull these plastic clips here, or covers. These come off. Make sure you don't lose them. And then we're going to go three full turns. So let's start here. Try to do this without ripping the paint off. Coming back around. That's one. Actually, two full turns may be enough. I think we're going to try it at two because it loosened up pretty good. All right, that's two full turns on that side. We're going to go two full now on this side. Make sure the camera can see what I'm doing. All right, take the cover off. Again, it's freezing. I actually got my propane heater running here because it's only going to be a high of 41 here in the Northeast today. And it is quite chilly. So, all right, two full turns. Coming around. And it's one. Come back around, and that's two. One thing I should buy is a belt alignment, 
alignment tool adjuster. I don't really do this that much to require it. Okay, so next order of business is going to be this bottom shock nut and bolt. So now we'll see if we can get this broke free. It shouldn't be that bad because these are only, I think, 45 foot-pounds, if I remember correctly. But you do need a three-quarter wrench and a T50. So, let's see. Let me check the screen, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Very good. All right, now, get this in here. And then, hopefully, get this... Throw the wrench on the ground. We do that too sometimes. I'm gonna hold this so I can get this backed off. Come on. Very tight fit in between the belt guard for the shock nut. Actually, you know what? Let me use my ratchet. See if I can break it free with the ratchet first. If we can get it with the flexible head ratchet, all the better. It is going to be tough holding this nut because it is very tight in between in the back here. Hopefully my big hand's not in the way. Come on, there we go. You stay on there. And then what we got to do is loosen this up so we can get it out. This should actually should have thread locker on it too. Come on. Try to get a good spot to get a... To get a bite on it and we'll be in business well, that ain't gonna work either let me see if it'll spin first oh yeah that's on there holy crap that's actually bending my torx bit so we may actually be stuck on this job till i get a different torx bit because it is not geez oh pete that's frozen on there Trying to loosen the nut if I can. Nope, that is not budging. Wow, that is on there. Holy crap. We're, we're going to be, I think, stuck. I'm going to have to go out and buy another T50 because it actually twisted the head on the, on the shaft here. It's twisting. I don't know if you guys can see that. That thing is not budging. Interesting. All right, I'm going to stop right here for a minute. All right, I'm back. You can see that nut is rounding off. The torx head not coming loose. It actually rounded out and destroyed my bit. Um, uh, they're not supposed to be that tight. Why they are, I wish I could tell you. I have no idea. Because they're only supposed to have blue Loctite and like 40, 45 foot-pounds, I think, is, is all they're supposed to be. So it shouldn't be that tight. So I'm going to attempt to get the wheel out, hopefully without catching the pulley, on that uh, nut and bolt. And hopefully once I get that out, if it'll come out for me, then I can, the wheel will be out of the way. I can work on getting that out from the back side. All right, so now we're going to push the jack underneath. You guys can see that good. Put the jack up here. Not really jacking it up. All we're doing is giving the tire support. The wheel support is what we're after. Just enough to, just enough. Like, oh, that might even be a little too much because it's really close. Oh, down, yes, okay. there it's gonna come up easy all right that's contact right there Slide that under a little more actually that's contact now I'm gonna put it in neutral and that should be neutral double check with the key yep we're in neutral okay now next step we're gonna take off the nut and knock out the axle And again, like before, with the front tire, you have to pay attention to your spacers. Now you can see on this side, 
there's a short probably half inch spacer on this side this side over here is fairly good size two and a half inch maybe so uh, you're not going to get those mixed up because they're so big uh, between the other side so all right let's knock out the axle and let's see where we're at try to get you an angle here without me getting in the way yeah that looks pretty good actually no let me come around right here so again dead blow hammer there goes our axle okay and then from the other side see that right we'll get this axle out Okay, there's the wheel cocking sideways. Come on. All right, there's our axle. Again, we're gonna do like we did with the front. It will be cleaned, wiped down thoroughly, and then we will add some fresh anti-seize to it. Cause that's like a major requirement for these. Okay, so now that that's out, let me get my feel like fudging up my uh, camera here with dirty uh, axle and I see prints so let me get a fresh pair of gloves for this it's starting to warm up in here a little bit with the propane heater running which is good taking the chill off anyway but like I said it was only gonna be 41 for a high and I'm out here it's early Right now, it's probably about 35 in the garage here. Okay. So now what we want to do, I got to go forward with the wheel so we can get it out and off the drive belt. Let's see what we got here. Get that loose. Yep, that's pretty loose. Get the jack out from underneath it. spacer on that side there's the spacers they both popped out I'll show them to you once we get the wheel out uh. okay get this move forward come on yeah get this dog on belt off here we'll be in business there we go. Belt's off. Wheels down. Uh, cock it sideways a little bit. And then it should come right out. And there it is. It's out. So, same as before. Don't set it down on the rotor side. When you lay it down, you never lay it down on the rotor side. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Come on really there you go so it's off belts off this is the inside adjuster you see it kind of sticking out see how that moves okay and remember we're two turns that's all we are so when we go back we tighten these up two turns i'll take a i'll take a tape measure just to check alignment just to you know make sure there's alignment points on the uh, swing arm see right there that little divot and then on the axle nut there's an alignment port there. You just go right to the center. So, and that shows you right where you need to be. So, so here's the spacer from the right side, looking from the, at the back of the bike, looking straight. Right side spacer, left side spacer was in like this. So the line goes to the outside. So main part of it now is it's off. And you see, it doesn't take that long. So, for the amount of time it takes, these are jobs you can do for yourself. You don't need to pay the dealership to do this. I mean, hell, you can even put your own tires on. But that's one thing I don't do. I don't have the spoons for it, nor do I have the strength after my neck injury. So just easier for me to take it to the dealership, have them pop the tire on, check the balance, and then bring it back and throw it on like I do with the front. Okay, so there you go. It is off ready to go all right I'll see you when we put it back together just wanted to pop back in and show you guys real quick uh, it took 
pair of vice grips holding the outside. And then it took a three quarter socket from the inside. I had to pound on because there's such a small surface here that the wrench, when I put it on and tried to, to loosen it, it just wouldn't grab it. So 6.3 quarter socket and that got it loose. So I will be replacing the bolts because I am replacing the shocks on this. So I figure while I got it apart, I'm going to go ahead and I'll loosen this side, get it ready to go. And then that top side, boy, I'm telling you, if they, uh, if they strip out too, I'm going to end up having to get in here with a, a roto tool and I'm going to have to cut the heads off so I can grab them with vice grips. But hopefully these will come apart. I hope because they're much cleaner up top than they were down at the bottom. So we shall see, but at least now that's off, that's out. I can go ahead and move that so when I put the wheel back, it's not in the way. And then hopefully we'll be in business. Everything will come together okay once the time comes there. So, okay, I'll see you when we go back together.